of private colleges that have sprung up recently, and they have been able to get federal assistance and provide very poor service in return. Sometimes not even an adequate education for a student to be able to get a job. And this particularly happened up in Lehigh Valley with the Lehigh Valley College, which ended up going bankrupt. And the tragedy of that is that students then come out of a college program with a huge amount of debt, with a degree that they cannot use to secure employment. And they're stuck holding that debt, and the private colleges then <coughs> make a pretty hefty profit. The federal government has to crack down on that. Community colleges uh, and other nonprofit colleges are where the federal government should be supporting students. And they should be ensuring that students do get adequate education there before any federal money flows to that. That's a, a top priority of mine because, again, it is private business making a profit, not delivering a service, and then students getting saddled with an enormous amount of debt. I very much support the President's proposals to bolster the work that community colleges can provide, both academic and technical. Uh, recently, in Allentown, I did great, but Jackson and I were both at, um, one of the city council in Allentown referenced how UGI, which is a local gas utility, did not have enough trained workers and technical skills to be able to pull up the pipes and replace them, uh, which are very dangerous, because some of those pipes are over 100 years old. So the federal government needs to ensure that local colleges are teaching what the current market needs. Thank you. Uh, and briefly, I, I just want to respond to what Rick said about uh, me volunteering for Congressman Ben. As many of you know, uh, I used to be a Republican. I've been very forthright about that. When I announced uh, my speech, I indicated, uh, when I announced back in November, that I used to be a, a Republican and that I was uh, uh, becoming a Democrat. And I was very clear that I did not leave the Republican Party. The Republican Party left me. As many of you know, the Republican Party has gone far to the right. Uh, I grew up in a Republican Party that, uh, and my family was very Republican, and I grew up in a, in a family that lionized uh, leaders like Eisenhower, leaders like Teddy Roosevelt, leaders like Abraham Lincoln, leaders who built the Transcontinental Railroad, who built the National Park System, who built the interstate system. Those leaders, those Republicans, could not win elections today. The Republican Party has gone far to the right. Uh, and so I've been very open about having, uh, having become a Democrat, and I do not think uh, in any way that's a negative. In fact, I can't tell you how many people I've spoken with who have said, I'm glad uh, that you've changed parties. I'm glad uh, to see Republicans waking up uh, and realizing where their party has been going, uh, particularly during this last presidential cycle. I think uh, to get to the question about uh, college students, the biggest thing that we can do for college students is to get this economy moving again. Uh, there are so many college students that have put themselves in debt, doing the right thing, getting an education, and yet cannot find good and decent work. What we need to do is we need to invest in our infrastructure to get the economy moving again, to get uh, jobs for engineers from colleges uh, to get uh, the demand in the economy built up uh, so that students can get work and can pay off their loans. Thank you. Thank you, Jackson. We're going to get the first stab of this next question. As I'm sure you are aware, uh, the great state of Pennsylvania just passed the voter ID law. Uh, do you believe this will suppress voters and do you support the Federal Help Vote Act amendment that will help outlaw other state voter suppression bills? I am opposed to the, uh, uh, the voter ID law, which uh, has, has no real uh, a problem that's addressing. If you look uh, over the past years, and I believe the Justice Department has actually conducted a study, there's, there's something only like five verified cases of actual voter fraud. This is a law that is addressing a problem that doesn't exist. What it is doing is suppressing democratic turnout. That's the purpose uh, of the law. And uh, so I am, uh, I am opposed to that. Uh, I'm opposed to uh, federal legislation that would uh, make those laws easier to implement, and I'm in favor of federal legislation that uh, would bring greater federal scrutiny to those laws. Uh, and I would point out that we shouldn't be surprised uh, that this is what Harrisburg 
is doing. If you look at what they were doing before this, uh, they were gerrymandering this district. Uh, there's a reason that you guys are in this district, and that's because they think it's going to help Charlie Dent get reelected. Uh, so it's clear uh, what they're doing has no, no real purpose uh, besides uh, trying to help uh, the Republican Party political. Thank you, Rick. It's a, a very expensive solution to something that isn't a problem, and I believe it will hurt us, and that it is targeted at uh, Democratic voters' oppression. They oppose it completely. Um, Jackson mentioned that the Republican Party left him. I am perplexed because you know, my background is in social work. And in the 1980s, I was working at a shelter for homeless families and back in the ministries of Bethlehem. And I, rem I remember the Republican Party back then. We had President Reagan. The Republicans cheered when he fired the air traffic controllers. President Reagan told us that ketchup as a vegetable for the school lunch program. We were told that it would be good to clear cut forests and to drill everywhere, and homeless people were lazy. I have never had an interest in being part of the Republican Party, either back in the 1980s or today. I'm a proud Democrat, and I'm very proud of what we stand for. Thank you. Okay, Rick, we're going to take this first one. Would you pass a bill that would impose unfunded mandates on the counties, cities, and municipalities? I would not do that. Uh, Allentown in particular, and that's where my senior center is based, has been struggling financially for a number of years. As we know, um, cities have had a decrease in tax base, and they've had increasing needs in many of its citizens. So unfunded mandates would only make that situation worse for either a county or for a city. I believe that we need to look to realign defense spending, which we have too many overseas bases. We have too many defense programs that are not meeting current national security threats. And that is where we need to look to make strategic cuts um, and not force a financial burden, worse financial burden on our cities and counties. Jackson? Uh, I, I would have to look at that on a on a case by case basis. On the one hand, I uh, agree uh, that our cities, uh, and particularly cities here in the 15th district, face uh, a tremendous financial strains, uh, uh, and they, in many ways, are forced to balance their budget in ways that the federal government uh, is not. And unfunded mandates uh, uh, do pose uh, uh, a great stress uh, on those citizens and, and taxpayers. Uh, at the same time. Many laws that we take for granted that we, uh, uh, we, we hold in high regard were also unfunded mandates. If you take something uh, like the Americans with Disabilities Act, uh, that brought access uh, to all sorts of areas for people with disabilities. Uh, that law was an unfunded mandate. I would have been uh, in favor of that law. So I would, I would have to treat that on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. Jackson, uh, this one's started off. Do you support the banning of earmarks? Why or why not? And would you push for earmarks or money towards Lebanon County? Uh, I do. Uh, I do believe in uh, in banning earmarks. I believe that earmarks, uh, uh, in many ways, began uh, in, in a uh, in a way that that you could understand. It was it was uh, it meant for representatives to be able to bring uh, projects to the community that people there really wanted. Uh, but it has morphed uh, into a situation where lobbyists uh, and people who, that, who have uh, the best connections, uh, the people that are willing to make the biggest donations uh, to Congress, uh, uh, use that system as a way of, uh, of getting what they want for their personal interests, uh, their special interests, rather than the interests of the district. And you have also seen the cost of these earmarks uh, balloon. Uh, uh, and they are, uh, while they certainly eliminating the earmarks themselves is not going to solve uh, our, our deficits, uh, it's <laughs> every bit counts. And these, uh, these earmarks certainly add up. Rick? I would support banning earmarks. In the Lehigh Valley, just about two weeks ago, international battery company shut down abruptly. 
it uh, was a very interesting company. They seem to have a technological breakthrough for making batteries in an environmentally friendly way. They were able to enhance the power of the battery that had military capabilities that could help keep our troops safe. Everything looked very good. Congressman Dent uh, secured a $2.1 million grant for them. And then it fell apart. I had a press conference. I asked Congressman Dent to investigate, to find out what had happened. And the bottom line as I see it is if you're a congressman and you're doing your job, which is reading legislation, studying the issues, meeting with constituents, you will never have the time to adequately evaluate the merit of a particular company to be able to then recommend a grant. Instead, experts and those who are able to make those evaluations should never accomplish them. Thank you. Next question, Rick, you'll start us off. How serious of a problem is the current federal fiscal deficit and what actions or goals should a new Democratic Congress advocate or take in regard to the budget and the debt? Well, obviously there is a concern if 40 cents on the dollar of what we're spending is borrowed. One of the things that has prompted me to work for Congress is looking at cuts. And it appears to me that the Republicans are much more interested in cutting programs that help people in need. I want to protect the programs that help people in need. I want to invest in the infrastructure and our workers. So deficit spending will continue. It needs to be spent well. Then what needs to be cut, probably more than anything else, and this is a huge amount of money, are a lot of government subsidies that go to private businesses, not just earmarks. There's a whole slew of government subsidies that go to marketing, export assistance, and as many of us know, private businesses are sitting on trillions of dollars that they're not spending, and yet we continue to subsidize efforts that should be what they spend their money on. And in an additional note to that, we should increase taxes on the wealthiest, we should increase taxes on those who make more than a million and I would put it in the context of paying for the war on terror, which is not the pay for. So there needs to be a balanced approach. We need to look at some cuts. We don't hurt those in need. We target businesses where they can pay for it themselves, and we enhance revenue. Thank you. Jackson? There's a, uh, a great cartoon of a man walking into his bank and uh, he's, he's in the bank and he says to his banker, I want to take out one of those mortgages on my grandchildren's future. And that's what we've been doing for too many years in this country. And it's the reason that a lot of people in my generation believe that Social Security and Medicare aren't going to be around for us the way that it was for my grandparents. And the solution to this is no real mystery. Every group Every bipartisan group that's looked into it has come up with the same conclusions. We are gonna to have to raise government revenue and we are gonna to have to modify some popular government programs. This is what the Simpson Bowles Commission concluded. This is what the Ritland DiMenici Commission concluded. This is what the Gang of Six concluded. The only people that don't realize this are the congressional leaders in Washington. You have congressional Republicans that believe you can balance the budget just by cutting Planned Parenthood or foreign aid. And then you don't need to raise taxes even on the wealthiest people in society. And to be fair, there are some congressional Democrats who believe that you could just put a surtax on billionaires and you don't need to make reforms to Social Security and Medicare so that they're around for my generation. I think it's time for representatives and for candidates who are willing to be frank with the American people and to say that we are going to have to make some sacrifices if we are going to get this country back on track. And I don't think Congressman Dent's vote today for the Ryan budget is in any way a vote to doing that. Thank you. 
The next one is another big question. Um, Jackson, you can start us off. As I'm sure you are aware, the last, over the last three days before the U.S. Supreme Court, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act has been argued. Um, do you agree with this law? And if the Supreme Court would strike down this law, would you advocate for stronger legislation in the future to provide health care for all Americans? I, uh, I am in favor of the Affordable Care Act. I think that there are uh, certainly some ways that it can be improved, but uh, I certainly hope that the Supreme Court does not strike down uh, this law, which was uh, uh, approved and passed by the democratically elected uh, branch of our government. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation about the Affordable Care Act, but it does three main things. Uh, it requires insurance companies to treat people fairly to make sure that people aren't uh, discriminated against based on pre-existing conditions. It requires uh, uh, insurance companies to keep uh, uh, parents' dependents on insurance until they're 26. It removes lifetime caps. Uh, all good things that I agree with. Uh, it requires everyone to have insurance. And it uh, uh, provides assistance for those Americans uh, that can't afford it themselves. And the, the funny thing is, this is actually a bipartisan idea. This idea is supported and was passed by the Republican frontrunner. So I don't know why uh, there has been so much misinformation and why there's so much controversy, and I certainly hope that the Supreme Court uh, does not strike this law down. Right. I wholeheartedly support the Affordable Care Act. Obviously, Medicare has been a fabulous program for senior citizens. It's covered in health care. And every day, I see medical miracles at the senior center for the all of you. If the Supreme Court does strike down the Affordable Health Care Act, then we come back with a single-payer system proposal. And that will pass Supreme Court muster because it should never be determined what type of care your child who has cancer gets because of the job that you have. That's an abomination. It's got to go. It's not fair. It's not fair in any sense of the word from the perspective of Christian ethics to the perspective of an effective economic based economy. Thank you. As a freshman congressman, how would you build a coalition that would help out our district and our state? And can you also give some examples of how you would work across the aisle and get some bipartisan support in Congress, Rick? Well, if I'm elected to Congress, uh, President Obama will be beginning his second term in office. And so hopefully the Republicans at that point will realize that it's time to be working with us as opposed to against us and keeping the American people hostage. I would look to first of all join the 30% in Congress now who are opposed to unfair trade agreements. And hopefully that percentage will increase. I believe that even Republicans at this point are beginning to see the destruction that unfair trade policies have done to this country. And we'll take on China. We're going to take on their currency manipulation. We're going to take on their list of violations of the WTO. So I believe getting into Congress in 2012, there will be a coalition of Republicans and Democrats to take on that issue. Also, when the Republicans see the backlash they're going to get from the senior citizen population because of the Ryan budget, they're going to back off that proposal also. And we can fix Social Security and Medicare very easily. For Social Security, we need to increase the tax cut. And it keeps that program sound for many years to come. For Medicare, we need to fight against fraud and abuse. And again, that's not from senior citizens, that's from providers. And we also have to take one of the core components of the Affordable Care Act, which has a patient followed for 30 days, so that the treatment that you get in the hospital, you're not just then taken out the door for a relapse, you're actually coming for the next 30 days. It's better for the patient, and it's better for costs. And those are areas where I think I'll be able to work with Republicans. Thank you. Jackson? 
there's there's a reason why Congress has a lower approval rating than Bomar Gaddafi, uh, and that's because people are sick of how uh, how polarized uh, and how many showdowns ha have been going on in Congress this year. Uh, I believe uh, when I beat Congressman Dent this fall to beat an incumbent. Uh, part of that reason is going to be because people are just disgusted with the way things are going in Washington. And that same sentiment is going to be shared in many other districts, not just the 15. And I believe there will be a significant number of freshmen that also want to change the way Congress does business. Uh, that also want to end uh, the brinksmanship method of negotiation. It used to be in Congress uh, that the way things were done uh, was along the lines of, uh, well, uh, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. And it has uh, become uh, a negotiation that goes along like this. You do what I want or I'm going to blow us up. You do what I want or I'm going to default on our national debt. You do what I want or we are going to shut down the government. That is not the way to operate uh, the United States government. Uh, and unfortunately, that's what Republicans, uh, including our current Congressman, Charlie Dent, have been doing. So I expect uh, there to be other, other people uh, in Congress like me that are willing to, to work that way, and nothing wakes up uh, incumbents like seeing their colleague on their left or their right uh, thrown out. Now I also want to say, I know many of these issues Rick and I uh, have been uh, uh, relatively in agreement on. I do hope we did get to some question uh, about the issue of choice, because I know that is one where we have a disagreement. Thank you.